What's going on Aqua Pros? Mike here. Today we are doing some work in the fish room over here, primarily on what was Shrimp Mountain, which you guys know as the tank that has all the rainbow endlers in it. It's kind of gotten away from me, as do you know a lot of my tanks when I'm busy working on stuff. It's hard to maintain 10 plus aquariums, guys. You know, I know some of you guys know how it is, but I just did my maintenance over here on the Jurassic tank with the puffer fish. They're hanging out, chilling in their clean house. Their clean cage, I should say. These things are literally velociraptors when it comes to eating snails. But anyway, today I wanted to touch on something that I think everybody should have in their arsenal, which is the algae laser gun, or at least what I call it. That's how I've rigged it here. And so this is a method of getting rid of algae that I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen before. This isn't some new method. A lot of people use this as a spot treatment for algae. And that's exactly what we're gonna demonstrate today. I wish I could just bore Lime LaCroix into my fish tank and kill algae, but unfortunately, we have to use something that's a little bit more risky. And uh, I think that's what I need to talk about because a lot of people, I think, think that hydrogen peroxide is safe or like a safe alternative to doing bleach dips and stuff like that, but that's not really the case at all. I've killed more than a couple fish using hydrogen peroxide back in the early days when I was first getting used to using it once I finally got it into my arsenal of tricks when it comes to making your tanks look nice and helping to stop algae. Before I talk more about how to use the hydrogen peroxide, I have to throw out the disclaimer, you know, don't always jump to solutions like this because it's not really 100% a solution we're not fixing the root of the problem what's really causing the algae this is just something that can help get you through tough times when it comes to algae when you're on the path of balancing your aquarium which I seem to be still balancing this tank you know months and months and months and months later it it, it happens the hydrogen peroxide this is 3% most of the time when you buy this stuff it's gonna be 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this stuff is really good for killing blackbeard algae. I, I found it also really helpful in getting rid of brown algae, which I did have a ton of up here on my moss. I should have showed you how that all went down. You gotta be very careful on moss because hydrogen peroxide can really tear through moss, which you don't wanna do, obviously. Your moss is expensive. But basically, we're shooting on hydrogen peroxide, which is a strong oxidizer. You know, when you get a cut, on your thumb and you put it on your thumb and it stings and it kind of fizzes, it's literally melting your skin away because it's just rapidly oxidizing your tissue, which is exactly what it's gonna do to the algae in the aquarium. And that same oxidizing power can act on your fish, their gills, their slime coat, and it can just totally tear through your fish. You don't want that to happen. So guys, you just have to be careful with the amount that you use. Now the exact amount that is going to cause problems in your aquarium is not an exact number. This isn't some thing that's been studied really well. So there's just a bunch of suggestions from experience from people that have done this in the past and that's what we have to work with. So the level at which this stuff becomes toxic and you can harm the organisms in your tank really depends, okay? Which is not the kind of answer you want when you're about to do something that could be lethal in your aquarium. Uh, it just, it, you know, you don't know how much is gonna be toxic. There's a rule of thumb for how much is too much, but it just depends, okay? It depends on how much organics do you have in your water right now? Because as you shoot that in, it's gonna rapidly oxidize organic compounds and so if you have a ton of organics in your water, you have really dirty water, then it might not be as effective and you might be able to put in more. Versus if you have RO water that you just put in the tank and you start shooting this stuff in, then it might be more toxic because there isn't as much organic material around. I don't wanna to get too crazy into this stuff, guys, but three mils per gallon of water is recommended as the max amount that you wanna put in your tank at one specific time. That's a general recommendation. If you go and you look up this information online, you're gonna find three mils. You're also gonna find people that say more than that, they say less than that, but I kind of tend to agree with the three mils being the max. Now, here's the thing. I don't even use three mils. I do half that. I do 1.5 mils for every gallon of water my tank is. I do that because my little setup here with the hydrogen peroxide bottle with the spray, every spray that I do, I've measured it and it's roughly 1.5 mils. So if I have a 20 gallon tank here, I know that I can spray 20 times and then I'm done. 
I'm not gonna go up to twice that because I just don't want to risk it. Another thing to keep in mind is that invertebrates tend to be more sensitive to this stuff. So if you're doing this on a shrimp tank, I wouldn't even do it to a shrimp tank. Just a couple sprays maybe in a tank that's you know 10 to 20 gallons. I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with it and push it too far. Before I show you how I like to do this, let's go ahead and check out what we're dealing with in this tank. We don't have blackbeard algae, we don't have brown algae, we have this string algae that's on the rocks and is on my boost and Anubius and kind of all over the place in here. And it's just to the point where a toothbrush isn't cutting it. I'm not able to get everything off that I want. And so now I'm kind of resorting to this method to see if it will work. I don't know, I haven't really used this stuff on too many different types of string algae. It seems very much so that certain types of algae are more susceptible than others. So we're gonna find out if it works here in this case. If you can remove plants from the aquarium, like these Anubias, they just pull right out. This is the safest way to treat. Take these out, put them you know, in a little tub, and then spray the plant directly. Let them sit, and then put them back into the aquarium after 10 minutes. You don't have to worry about harming your fish or anything else that's in your tank. Let's show an example of that here. Let me grab a piece of Anubias that clearly has some hair algae on the leaves. You guys can see that. That one's not that bad. Let me, let me, let me grab another one that has a little bit more. Yeah, so that one's definitely worse. Okay, so let's, real time here. Let's check this out. Let's go down here to our tub. I'm gonna try and prop the camera. Stay there, buddy. Okay, so let's grab this piece. And let's do, we can do a lot of sprays on here. How many sprays was that? Now I'm just gonna go through and do the other pieces that are floating in the tank and put them in here. We'll just put this one in the corner so you guys know which one it is and we'll check on that one as well as the other pieces after I've done them all and we wait a few minutes. We're gonna keep these plants down here in the tub for another 10 minutes while they're treated. In the meantime, let's start to work on the main tank. I didn't wanna remove the boost here and the Anubius because it's attached really well, but we still need to treat these areas because the plants, as you can see, still have a lot of algae on them. Rather than going completely into the aquarium like this and trying to aim down and shoot hydrogen peroxide over these plants like a lot of people do, it works, it's just, I don't know, I find it a little bit more difficult. And so what I'm gonna do, what I like to do is drain the tank down really low, get those areas that I wanna treat exposed, hit them you know, as many times as I can, wait a couple minutes, and then bring the tank back up. I think that also adds some safety into the mix. You do have a smaller volume of water, but for the most part, a lot of the hydrogen peroxide isn't even entering the system. It's landing on the affected areas, and yeah, some of it is dripping into the tank, but not all of it. So it kind of adds another buffer of security and can definitely help you from not affecting any of the organisms in your tank that you don't wanna harm. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are living that toothbrush lifestyle. I sure am. Look at that. Greatest tool ever invented. Also, brushing teeth is important, guys. Do it twice a day, but just not with this toothbrush. Okay, tank is drained down, exposing most of what I wanna hit with the H2O2. Fish are hiding in various corners of the tank. We'll try and keep this away from them with a controlled spray. Let's go ahead and get started. Kind of a controlled spray, not a huge deal. I just don't wanna go over my spray limit. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and slowly start to fill the tank back up. I'm gonna do a little bit more as the tank fills up. Just get in here really close and do some controlled sprays on some of the rock area. All right guys, the tank is full. First thing we wanna do is inspect our fish and make sure we don't see any burns or anything. And so far they look good. You wanna keep an eye on them though because 
right after you do the treatment doesn't mean you're gonna see uh, damage on your fish right away. It can take a little while, so we wanna just monitor these guys over the next couple of minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and look though into the tank and see what we were able to accomplish. So we definitely didn't get everything, but if we zoom in here on this boost, it's kinda hard to see because my front glass is dirty. We did kill a little bit of the algae, more than a little bit actually. What's still on there will come off soon. It's dead and it's not gonna adhere to the plant as well, so the endlers will pick at that and they'll be able to get it off. Same thing with the plants over here. And the rocks as well, if we look up here, we can see still some threads of algae, but they are now white and they should come off pretty easily. So we'll get in here with the toothbrush and we should actually be able to get a lot of that off now. So a little bit more brushing and we should get most of this stuff out of the tank. And my tank is full, so it doesn't, it doesn't like to get its teeth brushed at the moment, but we'll try not to spill a bunch of water here. Let's grab the plants that we took out of the tank initially and see how we did on those. So here were those two little pieces that we did in the beginning. You guys remember what those looked like. Let's see, let's see how we did here. So if we zoom out and we look at it, you'll notice that there is still a lot of filamentous algae on the leaves, but it appears to be all dead. So it's coming off really easily with my finger here. This is where hydrogen peroxide really does well though, which is on blackbeard algae, which is great because blackbeard algae is one of the toughest algae to get rid of in your aquarium. So here on the 33, I do have a little bit of it on the top of the lava rocks. Got our Amano shrimp in here trying to do their best but I have been feeding this tank a lot lately, so they're used to eating pellets and not algae, my fault. Yes, I did trim the tank once more, trying to get this right side to be a little bit thicker, wanted it lower. I know some of you are like, dude, you just trimmed it, but it was actually like two weeks ago. I don't know, it just it needed to get trimmed again. So, need to do some work on this tank as well. But anyway, let's start the water change, let's drain this tank down, and we'll apply the laser gun to this stuff. Again, guys, the hydrogen peroxide is super lethal to things like snails and other invertebrates, such as your shrimp. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and brush off all of these snails because I like them. I feed them to my puffer fish and they are loving hanging out on these rocks. So I'm gonna make sure they're out of the area before we shoot it. Now let's go ahead and laser us some algae. And this is actually really easy because the lava rock just kind of soaks it up. We wanna be careful of the moss as well. Like I mentioned before, it's also very sensitive to this stuff. And we'll just cover as much of the affected areas as we can. All right guys, so after the treatment, you can see here all the algae that was there is now red. And so that means it's no longer living and we can just leave it there and let our fish pick at it. Um, it'll eventually just fall off or be eaten by organisms in the tank. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I guess what I'm trying to get at with this whole video is that hydrogen peroxide is a good thing to use as a spot treatment. It's not supposed to be used as a cure-all to get rid of all of your algae problems, but I think it's important for every experienced aquarist to have it in their arsenal of tricks to help make their tank look as good as possible and to help get you through hard times where algae is just beating you up because it happens to all of us. Anyway guys, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now I gotta get down here and clean out the nano tank, but let me know what you think about using hydrogen peroxide in the aquarium. Is it something that you do to help you out with algae or is it something that you'll never try because it's, it's too sketchy to you? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload the next video. Thanks again guys, we'll see you next time.